What is geometric progression? Now, geometric progression, I will just I will just give some illustration, then I will now define it. That is the way we're going to do it. Now, let's say we have some sequence of numbers. Now, let's say the first one you have two, four, eight, and 16. Now, you have the next one, you have 12, 8, 5, whole number 1 over 2, 3, whole number 5 over 9. And then, this, this C part, you have 3, 9, minus 27, 81. Now, if you look at this sequence of numbers critically you see that they have a common features now let's look at the first one which is a if you look at a 4 divided by 2 is equal to what 2 8 divided by 4 is equal to what 2 16 divided by 8 is equal to 2 so if you find the ratio of the consecutive terms, you notice that the ratio is a constant. Now let's look at this other one. That means for this expression, it means that 2 times that common feature, times that common feature will give you the next value, which is 4. This 4 times this 4 times the common feature will give you what the next value, which is 8. So 8 times the common feature will give you the next value, which is 16. So let's also try look at the, the second one. You have 8 divided by 12 will give you what 2 all over 3. 5 whole number 1 all over 2 divided by 8 will give us this. Okay, this um, this is 5 whole number 1 all over 3. 1 all over 3. Sorry. So this will give us 16 all over 3 times 1 all over 8. So this will give us 2 all over 3. Now, if you look at this other one, 3 whole number 5 whole over 9. Divide by 5 whole number 1 all over 3 will give us this will give us 32 all over 9 times 3 all over 16. This will give us 3 here, 1, 3 here, 3, 16 here, 1, 16 here, 2. So it's still 2 all over 3. So you see, you have a common feature. So that means with this common feature, if you multiply this term with 2 all over 3, it will give us what? 8. If you also multiply this common, this term with the common feature 2 all over 3, it will give us what? 5 whole number 1 all over 3. If you multiply this 5 whole number 1 over 3 with the common feature which is one, uh, 2 over 3 it will give us 5 whole number 3 over 9 sorry 3 whole number 5 over 9 so now you see there is a common feature here so that means geometric that means from this expression, that means geometric progression is a sequence which, which the ratio of its consecutive consecutive terms is a constant. Now, 
it is a sequence on the line very important which is which the ratio of its consecutive terms is a constant so the ratio of its consecutive terms is a constant the ratio of its consecutive term will give you 2 over 3 now the consecutive term is here see this and these are consecutive terms so 8 all over 12 will give you this 5 whole well, number 1 over 3 divided by 8 will give you this so the ratio of the consecutive term is a constant so that is it. No, now let's look at the the, 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 the the third one. The third one will give you minus 9, minus 3, 9, minus 27, and 81. So if you divide 9, the consecutive term here, now 9 divided by minus 3 will give us minus 3. Now, minus 27 divided by 9 will give you minus 3. 81 divided by minus 27 will give you minus 3. So you see, the ratio of each consecutive terms is a constant. So if you see this sequence in which the ratio of each consecutive term is a constant, it is called geometric progression. Now, the constant might be a fraction or a whole number. It might be less than 1 or greater than 1. Just like this is less than 1. This one is less than 1. This is greater than one now let's look at some now now having defined this when i look at some things some other expression and there there is a short form of this geometric progression the short form is g dot p as in capital letter this is short form g dot p now the, the this um, this the ratio the ratio of the consecutive terms which is constant is called Common ratio because it's common, it's the same. Now, there is also a saying that if you have a term t, the next term will be t times the common ratio. So that is a general understanding of the geometric progression. So for a, for a geometric progression, if you know the a, a term, the next term is that term times the common ratio. Now with this, we can now be able to have a general formula for geometric progression. Now let's look at you have number number of terms you have terms now the first term is always a the second term will not be this a times the common ratio which is r so we have a times r the third term will not be a will not be this term times r so a times r it will not be times another r will not give you r square 
So the fourth term does the same thing. So you multiply R with this. So you have A times R raised to power what? 3. Now the fifth term does the same thing. You multiply the common ratio with this. So you have A times R raised to power what? 4. So with this understanding, we can now be able to know the nth term. So the nth term will now be a times r a times r raised to power. Now, when you look at this, the r's like this one now. The first term is r raised to power zero. So it is short of one. Now the the because anything raised to power 0 is 1. So that is why there is no R here. This one is R raised to power 1. This is 2. The second term, R raised to power 1. So it's short of 1. Now, the third term, because for you to be able to get, to be, for you to be able to formulate the formula, you need to now look at three things to see whether it, it is a general occurrence. Then you can now from that deduct your form, the formula. Now, we have looked at the first one. It's arrow raised to power 0. Anything raised to power 0 is 1. So this is 1. The next one is the, the arrow. The power of arrow here is 0. Here, the power of arrow here is 1 for the second term. The power of arrow for the third term is 2. So it is short of 1. So that means the n term will be arrow raised to power n minus 1. Simple. Now, let's now show try to see if it will give us the same thing here. So the first term is equal to what? A, using the general formula which we have gotten, A raised to power, A times R raised to power what? 1 minus 1, which is A times R raised to power 0. And anything raised to power 0 is 1. So it's A. Now let's look at the second term. Is A times R raised to power 2 minus 1. So you have A raised to A times R. So it's just the same thing. Now let's look at the third term. You now see, you say A times R raised to power 3 minus 1. So it's A raised to A times R raised to power 2. So we see it's the same thing. So now from this, we have been able to deduct the. Um, be able to know the general formula for geometry progression, which is the nth term is equal to a times r raised to power n minus 1. So this is a general formula. Now let's solve some examples. Now, for this example, we ask to find we have asked to state the formula formula in terms of n for the nth term as the simplest form. Now we are, the, the, we are given a sequence 1, 2, and what? 4. Now, the first term is A, which is equal to 1. The common ratio, which is R, is equal to what? It's 2 all over 1. Now, you will find the ratio of the consecutive term, which is 2 all over 1, is equal to 4 all over 2, which is equal to 2. So, so the Common ratio is 2. Now, the nth term using the general formula, which is A times R raised to power N minus 1. A is 1 times R is 2 raised to power N minus 1. So, this is the same thing as saying 2 raised to power N minus 1. So, the nth term is this. This is example 1. Now, let's look at example 2. 
Now, for example two, they said the first term and the seventh term and the seventh term of a geometric progression are forty and half and one all over eighteen. They said now uh, now respectively so now find the second term. Now this question is now they said the first term which is a is equal to what 40 and half which is the same thing as 81 all over 2 now the seventh term is what using the general formula is a times r raised to power 7 minus 1 which is a raised to power 8 times r raised to power 6 and they said this is the same thing as 1 all over 8 so now we should find, now we are asked to find the, the, self, the second term. Now since we have gotten this, we know our A to be 81 all over 2. Now we also know that A times R is equal 6 is 1 all over 18. So now, you have one a times r raised to power six is equal to one all over eighteen, and we have we know a to be eighty one all over two. So when we will see a, we we'll substitute it with eighty one all over two times r raised to power six, which is equal to one all over eight. So now we divide both sides by eighty one all over two. It's one all over two. So we divide both sides by this. So this will cancel out this. You now have R raised to power six is equal to one all over eighteen times two all over eighty one. Two divide this one, two divide this is nine. So we have R raised to power six is equal to one all over nine times eighty one. And 81 is the same thing as 9 raised to power 2. So this is the same thing as 9 raised to power 3. Because according to the law of indices, if you have if you have a raised to power x times a raised to power y, is same thing as saying a raised to power x plus y. And here you have 9 times 9 raised to power 2. So you have 9 raised to power 1 times 9 raised to power 2. So it's 9 raised to power 1 plus 2, which is equal to 9 raised to power 3. So we are going to use that here now. We are going to use this understanding. That is what we used there. So So, and we also know that 9 is the same thing as 3 raised to power 2, or raised to power 3. Three raised to power. So now this, you know, a raised to power x or raised to power y is equal to a raised to power x, a a raised to power x y so that means you're multiplying the power so 3 times 2 will give us 6 so this is the same thing as saying 1 all over 3 raised to power what 6 so now say r raised to power 6 is equal to 1 all over 3 raised to power 6 so if you cancel out these powers, if you divide, if you cancel out the powers, R is equal to 1 over 3. 
So R is equal to 1 over 3. So now to find the second term, which is the same thing as A times R raised to power 2 minus 1, which is A raised to power A times R. So A is it's already 81. So A is 81 divided by 2 times R, which is 1 all over 3. So 3 divided is 1. 3 divided 81 is 27. So you now have 27 all over 2. So this will give us what? 1. 3, 1 all over 2. So 13 and half. That is the second term. So this is the final answer. So thank you for watching to the end. Have a nice day. And also do well to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that anytime I make new videos, you'll be the first to watch. Thank you. God bless and have a nice day.